All right, in-season maintenance programs. Uh, number one is garbage. Forget the in-season maintenance. We're going to get stronger throughout the process. Uh, stay tuned to episode 55 of the Strength of America podcast. We'll go into more detail on why you should be expecting more of your in-season program. of America podcast. All right, guys, welcome back. I uh, appreciate it. Yes, and in season, like Bobby said, yes, that was kind of direct. And <laughs> after 30 years, I can be direct. It's okay. Because, you know, the, the typically what thought is of in-season training is, okay, you've done all your building, you're strong, you're fast. Now during the season, we just want to keep you uh, healthy, which is true, but maintaining strength for a three to four month season uh, to me is wrong. I can tell you, we should be getting better throughout the season. And after over 30 years of training, we can tell you if the kids are eating right, hydrating, doing what they need to, and they're on, on the right program, they'll actually be stronger at the end of the season, which is what you want in your postseason play. Your vertical jump should be better, your speed, you're faster, your stamina is better. That's what we want in an in-season in program. Yes, staying healthy, maybe we don't do as much volume, but we still should be getting better. What are some of your thoughts on in-season training, Bob? Um, and just kind of like he said, I think some people get afraid of um, thinking about too much water in the bucket there. And by doing, and by that I mean having too much that the kids are doing, having giving the kids too much to do. Uh, they're not going to recover. They're stressed about that factor. And you know, the more I've found from just my short time of doing this is that the programs that give the kids more structure and more to do, they end up doing better. Um, the, the programs that give the kids more options, um, of what to do, what they think they should do. And I'm not saying you shouldn't listen to the kids, but again, they're kids and they don't quite know yet. They don't have the experience that you do. But if I give kids more options, they're not likely always going to choose the better of the two options. So sometimes we just need to understand that we got to give them structure and lead them on the path to where they need to be because they don't know because they're young. That's why they're depending on you. So don't be afraid of asking more of them. I think we should always try to ask more of them, you know, just like we should always try to ask more of ourselves. So kind of just take that approach and that mindset to in-season training. Yeah, and those of you that are actually implementing programs and thinking about your in-season, I want you thinking a little bit more about, yes, our off-season program, if we're just working our seven-week summer camps, it's four days a week, usually an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes each day of daily training or strength or power, speed, that volume, we don't do that in the in-season. We just can't put that time in, their practice time, school, everything else. So we, we do reduce that, but we get more specific to their needs and things to keep them up. What he's saying about listening to the athletes if they tell you they've got a problem, they're banged up knee, or there's a shoulder things, we adjust and we listen to those things. But if you're giving them choices of more complex, more difficult work, or the smaller, easier things, a lot of times they're going to choose the easier because they get tired and things happen. So that's where you have to evaluate where they are and what their needs. The in-season really is, goal is keeping them healthy, keeping them playing throughout. Things get banged up during the season, your games, so you adjust accordingly. You always have your plan A. If they're healthy and everything's great, plan B, adjusting if they're going to need to be. But you never should be expecting to maintain over a four-month period. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, and they found from the research, you know, it doesn't take, first of all, it doesn't take long for conditioning to decay. Uh, that could be a week to two weeks right there um, for a nurse aspects and stuff like that. You know, we talk about strength training and atrophy of the muscle and stuff like that. It's like three to four weeks, generally about a month time frame. So if we understand that, Let's say I stop the training once I start my season. Maybe I'll hold it for the first month. But after that, that's when you get in the heart of the season. And then after that is hopefully playoffs if you make it, you know, depending on your sport or what you got. So you don't want to be lower performance wise at the end of your season. You know, I mean, who cares at the beginning? You know, obviously you want to be at that high point all throughout. But if I did all that work and I'm at a high point at the beginning of the season now, I drop here in the middle and then I'm here at the end, you know, I likely we're probably going to see more injuries along with a decreased performance. So just, yeah. just understand that like he's talking about, we're going to, we're already dropping the volume from three, four days to two days in an hour. That's not a lot to ask from these kids. No. And you talk about the, the, the whys and how they're involved into it. That's looking at their, their work and their volume. This kid's also on the idea of, of if they're working hard and they're getting better and they're strong, you take away the weights 
or you take away some of the power training and some of the things that they were doing, their self-confidence goes down as well. They don't feel as good. If they know they're strong, they physically are moving the weight, they're doing the things they need to throughout the year, as that season progresses, their confidence comes up. They feel like they can do more. The kids will feel if they were on a real structured program and you take it away during the season, they're going to feel weaker. They're going to feel like they can't do it. And that's the last thing you need as an athlete to start losing confidence because they're missing a key component of what their training is. So hit the basics, hit the power stuff, your gym time, you may be exclusive to three or four lifts, period, sometimes two each time you go into the weight room. And in the summertime, you may do eight to 12 exercises in there. But you take a look at the base things we're after for our power, our strength, stamina, keeping them up. You hit Those are the essentials you have to keep with. So it's, it's really evaluating what program you're doing, understand what your goals are, and we still have to keep that. So I've never, I haven't been a big believer in a long time about these kids need to be on a maintenance program to keep them going. Uh, because again, these kids are adapting, they're growing. If they're, I don't know if they're if on the right program, possible to maintain. No, it, so. it really don't. And what they'll end up doing is they'll get weaker. And we've had uh, teams, for example, some of the basketball teams worked in the past, a lot of off-season conditioning time. We do that work with them, build up their strength, their power, their vertical jump. Everything's great. And then they don't do it during the season because the coach wants to just work basketball stuff. Well, at the end of the season, we post test. And we took one team, for example, just to help get them understand that you need to keep up with it. They had an average of two and a half inch loss in their vertical jump on this basketball team at the end of their season. Why should they be getting lower? And the coach, the big part for me was understanding for them why they were losing it. They jump all season, but they weren't doing specific work for that jump. They were just going through the drills and going. If they didn't understand, they've got to create power every time they hit. They've got to get that extension, pop the body up. They're losing core strength they're not going to have that same vertical jump. So nobody, no basketball team should lose vertical jump by the end of that season and become worse. That was just after that was the first year that they understood, man, that's it. We're in season. We're going through it. We'll continue to get better. And they should. At the end of that season, they all had better vertical jumps than when they started. So they'll continue to get better if they're doing it correctly. So I hope that helps to at least put some insight into this uh, myth of in-season maintenance. Uh, because again, like I said at the beginning, really it's garbage. If your whole thing is just to keep them uh, even throughout the season, not getting worse, you're not doing justice to your kids. And I, I, to touch on a point from earlier, if I have the kids be a part of a training program before and then I pull that away in season, that might start to question their uh, philosophy as our ideas behind training. That might start to get them to think, well, if we're taking away in season, does that mean that this isn't really important? So that might start to bleed into other aspects too. So we talk about the buy-in and different things. If I get kids to, if I keep consistency and I keep structure year round, it just keeps a smoother, uh, a smoother boat for the kids to, to ride along on. And uh, if I get going through and, and we're talking about other things and actually when you're talking about the four or five exercises, um, that's a great point to start off with. My football team is a lot of, a lot of kids in there. We have about four exercises we can get in. Part of that's just because of time frame and how many people we pack in there. Um, so other groups that I have less people, they may have four to five real exercises. And then paired with that in groups is going to be things of uh, a prehab nature or core nature or things like that. So we may end up with nine things on the sheet. Four or five are really maybe more weight driven and the others are more prehab core based. So outside of that, I start to think about, OK, the first month I'm getting these kids. They've never trained first month at least for us most of our fall sports don't have competition so we're going to add in a little bit of the extra stuff and then start to pull away once they start to get into the heart of their season so that's another thing i like to think of too you know we hit end season if i hadn't had these kids i got a month and i'm going to try to add a few things to make sure we're trying to bold proof the best we can with the short time and then we'll start to pull away as stuff goes but something i like to do is just communicate with my kids that know what they're doing that have been a part of it and that are hard workers and then I'll communicate with them. I'll say, hey, how are you feeling with the program and stuff like that? Um, at the end of the day, I've done a lot of training, so I know. But I also know that kids nowadays have more issues, irritations from all the sitting and different things that they're doing that I mean, even I never had. And that wasn't too long ago. So it's just being aware. That's the biggest thing. And sometimes kids may be beat down on a day in season. So just adjust the, the, the template for the day a little bit. Uh, that's another thing, yeah, learning that, how to co have that coach's eye and auto-regulate. Oh, yeah. Those are great. I think the big part, too, is we think 
where I hear a lot more about in season, not doing the lifting or the training comes from our baseball and softball, more baseball sometimes, but for them understanding we're not doing maybe as heavy a loads because the amount of overhead, the rotations and things are doing when they're throwing. So we do modify that. We don't do the same kind of an off season program for our baseball softball players that we do during the season. However, my baseball players and softball that I work with in season, they still become stronger by the end of that season to where a lot of them won't touch weights during the season at all because of all the throwing, which is just the opposite. You think about the stress over and over and over you're throwing. You're not working the posterior chain at all. You're not working opposing muscle groups. They can't handle the stress, which is why we start seeing with all the games and all the practice times that they have, why we're getting more overuse injuries for these athletes. So strength training is an essential part year round. Yes, you modify and you change the training from in season, off season, but never go into the mentality of we're just trying to maintain strength for a three to four month period. Uh, so please get that out. If you have questions, let us know. Comment with some stuff below. We'll put some more things on Instagram. Appreciate you guys commenting, throwing things out about the last week on our next series. Um, we'll keep that coming as well on those or any questions you have. Please let us know and uh, comments and new ideas you'd like to see as well in the podcast or just short clips on exercise and drills. We'd be glad to help. Awesome. Oh, and look for coming up. Actually, next weekend, we'll put some things out coming in. But we're Bobby and I are going to head back to Nebraska. It's uh, Boyd Epley, who I started with mine as a strength coach at Nebraska from 85 to 89. Boyd is celebrating 50 years of Husker power, starting strength and conditioning at the University of Nebraska, which also was pretty much the starting of strength and conditioning for athletics around the country. So we're going back to help him celebrate 50 years. A lot of the strength coaches are going back for that. I'll uh, get to meet some of the other coaches, uh, Bobby Love behind the scenes stuff so we'll take you in with some of the behind the scenes pictures of what's going on with the strength program before middle where they're at where they're headed and uh how you can learn more about the program there at nebraska too and husker power so i'm excited to get back and show bobby and get bobby to his first husker game yeah, on saturday as well cool. yeah. a lot of red we gotta get some more red for bobby <laughs> all right appreciate you guys following thanks for being part of the strength america family and we'll see you guys next time thanks. see you